All right, uh, good morning, uh, everybody. At least if you're on this part of the world, it's good morning. If you're on uh, some other part of the world, it's good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome to our November uh, live stream. Uh, this is our first one in November. We're gonna have two this week. Uh, today's is focused on uh, cats and our light wallet launch. Uh, we have a couple people here today who wanna talk about both cats themselves, uh, stuff around them, and the light wallet that'll be available. Uh, everything we're gonna talk about today is gonna be made available for you to download and use right after this uh, stream is over. Uh, as always, if you have questions, please put them in the questions and answer box in Zoom, not in uh, chat because we probably won't see it. So please use that question and answers box. We also ask that you keep all of your questions uh, kind of focused today on topic on the uh, actual subject of cats and the light wallet. We know people have other things they want to talk about, but we have another 
call tomorrow that we're doing around our dust storm postmortem, and we have another AMA coming up soon that's an actual AMA. So today we're kind of focusing just on the cats and on the light wallet. Uh, so we're going to start off with everyone kind of introducing themselves and talking about the things that we're going to kind of going to go over. Uh, and then we're going to move into a more technical sort of walkthrough on how to actually make one. So if you're just here to kind of get the information and understand the wallet and those kinds of things, this first half is going to be super like, you know, important to you. But if you don't, AJ, you're on mute. I'm not. Oh, I'm on mute in Zoom. Uh, everyone on YouTube, you're going to get this the second time. Everyone on Zoom, you're going to hear this for the first time. Sorry. Uh, welcome, everybody, to our November, uh, the first call of November that we have. Uh, so this one's going to be about cats and our new light wallet. Uh, we're going to have another one tomorrow. If you have questions about the dust storm mask, we're going to hold those for tomorrow. And we're going to have another AMA coming up soon. So all your questions, we prefer to be focused around on the cats and the light wallet uh, for this particular call. Uh, we're going to let everyone kind of introduce themselves and say hi and kind of go over what we're going to talk about today. And then we're going to jump into telling you all about CATS and the Light Wallet and those systems. Uh, after that, we're going to go into a more technical dive where we're going to actually walk folks through how you can actually mint a CAT in sort of a little walkthrough. Uh, as always, if you have questions, please put the questions in the Q&A box. And Zoom had actually kicked us out of the server. I have an error on my screen. We aren't even on Zoom. <sighs> Sorry, YouTube folks, you're gonna get this a third time. Zoom is not my friend today. Uh, first, Zoom remuted me. Then Zoom killed the, the, uh, the panel call. Okay, so before I do a third introduction, <laughs> before I do a third introduction, uh, let me just quadruple check the Zoom stuff now because you know what I've decided? I don't like Zoom. I have decided I don't like Zoom. Um, so let me also, we're going to get uh, Dan pulled up into here to the panelists. And uh, let's do that as well. We have someone who wasn't in uh, the panel group when we started and you can't change it once you start. So I'm fixing that right now real quick. There we go. All right. Uh, okay. So I think I have finally tamed Zoom. <laughs> this is the worst, roughest start I've had on any of these yet. My apologies to everyone. Uh, extra apologies to the YouTube crowd because you're all about to get a third introduction. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to our November uh, Q&A call for Cats and the Light Wallet. This is our first of two calls this week. Uh, this one's primarily focused on cats and the light wallet. We know you guys have a lot of questions about a lot of things. Uh, we do ask that you focus just on cats and the light wallet. Anything else we're not going to be able to get to, and we're going to ask you to hold that if it's relevant for tomorrow or for a later date coming up soon for our next AMA. Uh, we're going to kind of go through all about the cats themselves, uh, both how to actually use them and the fundamentals behind them, and also about the light wallet that we're releasing to go with it. Everything we're talking about today that we reference in terms of documentation, links, programs, et cetera, are gonna be made available for download as soon as this calls over on our site. And we're gonna link those a couple different places and talk about it as we go through. Uh, and we're gonna start off with the uh, discussions and questions. And then we're gonna go into a very technical walkthrough on how to actually mint them yourselves. Uh, and with that said, now that I've done like three or four different intros and everything should be working fine with Zoom now, I'm gonna let everybody take a second to introduce themselves. Brian, why don't you go first? Because no one knows who you are. Also, you're muted. Actually, I can just fix that. There we go. Uh, yeah, I, I'm Bram. I'm the big kahuna at Chia. Um, I figured out the high level tricks that are used to implement cats in our very simplified model, but didn't do any of the actual coding. Paul? Hey, everybody. I'm Paul Hainsworth. I am our head of product management here at Chia. Um, and I'll be walking you through uh, some of the features of CATS uh, after Matt and Matt introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Matt H. And I write Cheerless programs. Matt H. O. Oh, actually, um, I'm also Matt H. I'm Quexington on Keybase. And uh, I also write Cheerless programs. <laughs> Dan Perry, and I'm a new technical writer for Chia, documenting all these great features that are coming out for you guys. 
Great. Well, with the intros uh, through, um, we'll jump on in. Uh, so today's uh, AMA is going to be structured a little bit differently, as you heard from Jay. We're going to first start it's with- It's a Q&A, uh, not an AMA. <clears throat> that's right. It's a Q&A. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, some of the material from our announcements. Uh, big news to share with you today. Um, we're going to talk through some of that stuff. Uh, and then secondly, we're going to go into uh, taking questions. And then thirdly, uh, we have bravely decided we're going to do a live demo for you uh, in which uh, Dan and Quexington are going to show you how as a developer, you can issue, you can create issue and mint a cat. Uh, so we're gonna do that live and have that uh, up um, as a developer educational tool uh, later on. Uh, so with that, let's jump into what we're announcing today. Um, the first uh, part is we are announcing CAT1, which is uh, the uh, first standard that we're announcing. Uh, CAT, as you probably have heard, stands for Chia Asset Token, um, and is the first mainnet release of our tokens. Um, we're releasing CAT1 in draft, and uh, we're doing that to request comments from uh, our developer community. Uh, and then we will finalize that shortly thereafter. So there's a period in which uh, we're going to enable you to give us feedback and then we will uh, finalize the standard. Um, as a standard, uh, CAT1 uh, has a lot of benefits. It's interoperable with wallets, exchanges, block explorers, but uh, CAT1 tokens are also interoperable with other uh, tokens on the platform. And we'll have more on that later. Uh, the other major announcement today is that we are uh, releasing a light wallet. Uh, today's release uh, includes the ability to have uh, cats in that wallet, um, but also as a light wallet, it enables you to uh, run the wallet without having to also run a full node or do farming. Um, that will be downloadable at chia.net and we'll have links for that soon. So let's jump into some of the uh, key features of cats. Um, uh, we're going to uh, share some of that discussion here. I'll start off first. Uh, first of all, cats can't be counterfeited. You can only have uh, one tail typically, um, and you can't create identical cats, which means that uh, other people can't spoof your cat that you've created. Uh, we made an important technical decision that metadata about the cat, such as its name, uh, URLs for it, uh, its ticker name, uh, are not actually included in the cat itself. Uh, and that's really important because it does also prevent spoofing. Um, we're uh, going to be releasing in January a process in which it becomes easy to discover and uh, identify a unique cat in a wallet through a process that we call verification. We'll have more on that soon. Uh, another important uh, feature of cats are that they can't be seized. Once an issuer mints cats and you acquire them, uh, the issuer can't just take them back from you. Um, they're your keys and so they're your coins. The next feature that we're gonna talk about, uh, I'm gonna hand to Quex uh, to talk about arbitrary minting. Why don't you take it away, Quex? Right, so just real quick, let me talk about um, what tails are and, and what how important they are to the cat. Um, the tail stands for token and asset issuance limitations. Um, and we got there somehow. Um, and if you hash it, we have you get the uh, cat's asset ID, which you'll see in the wallet as the uh, the way that you identify a cat and the way that you add it to your wallet. Um, uh, but yeah, a tail is just an arbitrary geo list program. Uh, we went through a couple of iterations of how to do it, and I'm really happy with how we ended up because it works just like a regular geo list program. You run the program at the end of the cat spend if you'd like, and it outputs a list of conditions that optionally get added to what hits the blockchain. Um, so it's, it's just like writing a normal Chia list program, except that it uh, gets a very specific API of things, um, that are going to be passed to it as, uh, truths. Um, uh, so yeah, because it's an arbitrary Chia list program, uh, you can do kind of arbitrary issuance rules. You can do a one-time issuance, which is how cats worked, um, in the previous beta. Um, you can set it up so that you can, uh, do everything you want with a signature. You can make them melt them. All sorts of stuff. You can even do really crazy stuff. It's it's entirely arbitrary chia list. You could even farm them if you wanted to. You could make sure the cats only come from a, a block reward or something like that. Something cool. Um, so it's really just entirely up to your creativity and your requirements. Um, it's an arbitrary program, so it can do uh, whatever you'd like. 
Thanks, Matt. Uh, uh, next, uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, melting and burning. Matt, do you mind uh, walking us through uh, what those mean and the process? Sure. Um, so melting and burning, they sound similar and they are similar, and it can be a little bit confusing. Um, one of the things about cats as we have implemented them is that there is underlying uh, cheer like mojos inside of it. Think of it as like a chocolate coin with a real coin inside. So if you melt a cat, that gets rid of the chocolate, leaving you with the real coin. And if you burn, that throws the whole thing in a pit of lava. Uh, and there are different situations where you'd want to do either of those things. And we support both of them, which is very good. Excellent. Um, Matt, can you also talk to us a little bit about uh, the interoperability capability of CATS? Sure. So with the CAT standard, one thing that we wanted to do is not have them all be isolated wells of CAT. Uh, one of the great advantages of separating the tail out into this program that kind of plugs in is that CATs of different types can communicate with each other. Um, they, different types of CATs using the CAT1 standard are interoperable. Um, shall, shall I keep going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why, why don't you continue, uh, uh, continue on down the list? OK. Um, another advantage to, to the tails is that it allows us to do upgrading of coins where the tail program of uh, let's say you want to expand the capabilities of your cat token. What you could do is create a new tail that, where the issuance rules allow you to take the old coin and redeem them for some of the new coin. Um, other, <laughs> sorry, um, other great features with our cats are that they are programmable. Owning a cat allows you to put your own inner puzzle in it. Uh, and these inner puzzles can be as uh, deeply complicated and intricate as any Chia program. Um, so when you, when you own a cat, that is yours to program and fill, fill the inner puzzle hole with any code that you like. Uh, and that brings me to the final point, which is uh, composability. Both the, the, the tail program and the inner puzzle for ownership um, are interoperable with all Cheerlisp. So you could have a tail that does issuance based on a DID, for example, or an inner puzzle could be rate limited or have further layers of inner puzzles even inside of that. Um, the, the potential interconnectivity of the, the CAT1 standard is pretty great. Thanks, Matt. That, that's a great uh, uh, intro to uh, the CAT1 standard. Uh, the team has been uh, working hard to bring this uh, to market uh, for some time now. Uh, but as you probably all guess, the big kahuna behind all of this has been BRAM. Uh, with uh, a lot of um, you know, early uh, R&D conceptualization uh, around what we're, what we're doing. So we're really executing on the overall vision that Bram has laid out for us. Uh, Bram, before we move on, are there any other uh, capabilities that you wanted to add about the CAT1 standard? Uh, at a high level, so we're not using the term uh, colored coins so much anymore, but it, these cats are an example of colored coins, that the cat coins are real honest-to-goodness coins uh, on Chia and have the same kind of level of functionality as general purpose coins. They just have this extra capability that they can prove that they represent a certain amount of a certain asset. Uh, on top of that, but they are capable of communicating with other coins and having um, their own smart coin functionality and all that good stuff. 
uh, a lot of uh, cats have been very important to us, even in terms of the fundamental underlying development of how the Chia on chain programming environment works, because uh, anyone who uh, digs into <laughs> uh, how Chia Lisp works will very rapidly discover that if you didn't know what you were doing, you would just assume that it wasn't capable of actually doing anything useful. It doesn't look like it's capable of doing anything useful. You have to use certain programmatic tricks to do it. And having good, um, having the, the, being able to implement cats was a real proving point for us to say, this is the appropriate level of complexity to build into the underlying chain and everything else can be built on top of that. Great. Uh, thanks, Bram. Uh, we're going to move to uh, talk a little bit uh, about uh, how you can get started as a developer in the ecosystem. And for that, we're going to hand it to Dan Perry. Oh, hey, guys. So I've been working on a, a few docs to, uh, to document these new features in CATS. So there are two different tutorials coming out. And I think this will be done by the end of this call, most likely up on chialisp.com. So there's tutorials for creating your own cats, uh, both on Windows and on Linux and Mac OS. Uh, and we go into a couple of different tales during those tutorials. One of them is uh, just a single issuance tale where you can only issue, uh, make one issuance of the cats, so one minting. And that's based on a coin which can only be spent once and it's a specific coin. So you can never issue more uh, or mint more coins again after that. Uh, and then there's another tale that's much more flexible, which allows you to uh, do multiple mintings uh, as the creator of the cats. It, it, that would be quite beneficial if you wanna create a stable coin and you, for example, mint some coins and then later receive more funds, uh, backing funds and want to mint more. Uh, on top of that, we have the Cat1 standard out there uh, on chialisp.com as well. And there's a few FAQs added into our main FAQ section. And the, there's much more documentation to come in the future. There's a lot more features that uh, we still have to write about. Thanks, Dan. And, and as always, uh, you can come to our Chialisp channel on Keybase uh, if you have questions. Ah. Uh, that will be your go-to place for uh, near real-time support. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next announcement, which is uh, about our Light Wallet. Uh, so as of today, we're going to be launching uh, a new wallet that's downloadable from Chia.net. Uh, and I'll talk about a couple of the features of that. The first, of course, is that it supports cats. Uh, this is the first wallet in the world to support cats. Um, and we hope for many more. Uh, second part is that it is, of course, an open source reference implementation. Uh, we expect uh, other wallet uh, developers to uh, use this reference implementation to build uh, cats into their own wallets. The third is that it's adding uh, a capability uh, called memos. You've seen memos on other blockchains. It's uh, a way to add metadata to a transaction. Uh, so you're going to see that in the Light Wallet as well. And the fourth is that it uses a new Electrum style protocol, which enables you to start using the wallet within seconds to minutes, instead of having to sync for hours and hours the way that the current wallet uh, connected to our full node and farmer software works. Uh, Bram, do you wanna talk for a moment about uh, that Electrum style protocol and some of the capabilities of it? Uh, yeah, it's not... Um... It's when we say Electrum style, uh, Electrum often is talking to a trusted node. This does not require that. So it's still able to talk to an arbitrary full node. It's, uh, and we have support for this protocol rolled out in our full node code as well. Um, and uh, it still verifies the weight of whatever it is that the full node is on. So it's, has essentially the same threat model as Bitcoin's light protocol does, that you are verifying the weight of the chain, um, but you're, uh, 
uh, yeah, you're, you're verifying the weight of the chain from the full nodes that you're talking to. Although you do have to talk to multiple full nodes because although the full node that you're talking to can't give you any false uh, positives, it can't tell you that something happened that didn't actually happen, it uh, can give you false negatives. It can skip something uh, for you. That that's kind of the trade-off with being with it being a nice, quick, lightweight protocol. So uh, we're kind of downgrading to the Bitcoin <laughs> um, uh, standard uh, threat model for the light client protocol. Great, thanks, Brian. Uh, let's move on to talking for a moment about what's coming next for cats. Uh, one of the next major announcements that we'll have for you shortly is a thing called Offer Files, uh, which uh, we're pretty excited about uh, here at Chia. Um, maybe Bram, uh, would you mind talking a little bit about offers and what kind of capabilities it might unlock for the ecosystem? Yeah, yeah. So, so offers allow for over-the-counter trading. Whenever you have uh, any cat in Chia, if you want to trade it for Chia or for a different cat with someone else, uh, you and your counterparty who want to trade with each other can directly trade with each other on the blockchain with no exchange, trusted third party, anything uh, in the middle. Uh, this is done by making, uh, by one of you makes an offer file, which e essentially uh, say you want to trade some of the cat for some Chia, you make a an offer, which is a partial transaction. It's not done yet, but you make it, um, uh, it you make this thing, uh, make a bunch of Chia just disappear into the ether and print a bunch of the cat, which is not valid because you can't just print the cat. But you can now take this uh, offer file and send it off chain uh, to whoever you want to transact with. And in fact, it doesn't need to be over a trusted channel and it doesn't need to be with a trusted counterparty. You could post it on Reddit or 4chan or whatever. And whoever it is that finds it can then make a balancing part of this transaction. They can print a balancing amount of Chia and they can uh, make a balancing amount of cats disappear. So it all, both of them net out to having deltas of zero. And now this is a valid transaction which will actually go through on the blockchain. And in fact, it's even possible to market make with this where someone could take a bunch of these, a third party who has a bunch of offers could put them together uh, and uh, uh, possibly even uh, pocket some spread off of it and make all of that go through. So th this enables immediate automatic uh, liquidity in all uh, in all cat and tokens. Yeah, super exciting. Um, it, it's, uh, it's something that we're going to be talking about a lot at Chia and is a really significant difference between the Chia blockchain and other chains out there. So more on that soon. Uh, related topic uh, uh, coming soon is uh, AMMs. Um, uh, Matt, uh, Howard, would you like to talk for a moment about this? And then me, Bram, you might have some thoughts about this too. Uh, I think it'd be better if Bram just took it from the straight, but. All right, This was kind of the fear that, you know, if we have Bram on this call, his answers are so great at everything that you'll just end up answering <laughs> right. everything. Uh, okay, so, so uh, AMMs, uh, for those of you who don't know, are automated market makers. It is a, a, a program sitting on chain that is willing to trade with anyone who comes and wants to trade with it. Um, it. This sounds a little counterintuitive that this won't just get exploited and lose all of its money, uh, but it turns out a programmatic trader can do a, a rebalancing strategy <laughs> where it tries to maintain equal amounts of these two different types of assets that it's pairing with each other. Um, in this case, it does it by uh, assuming that the value of the deposits it has of the two different things, uh, whatever they are, are equal, uh, and then being willing to trade uh, in ways that appear to be profitable to it, making that assumption. Um, uh, it's this weird thing in finance in general that uh, the variance with a lot of assets is way too much. And if you just follow a rebalancing strategy, then no matter what ratio the value of two assets have, if it goes back to where it was before, after bouncing around a bit, you will be up uh, on the trades. And this happens in inefficient, illiquid, insane markets way too much. 
happens a lot with cryptocurrencies. Um, so these uh, brainless uh, trading algorithms can do well. They also are providers of uh, liquidity. Um, so that if you want to do a trade, you always have someone you can trade with if you want to convert one thing to another and can be a not good, but something uh, price oracle that can give you an idea of what the ratio, uh, what, what the exchange rate between two different things um, uh, should be. So it's possible to implement these in Chia. Uh, we have not done so yet, <laughs> uh, but we have uh, plans to do so uh, in, in the future and a general roadmap for uh, how we're going to go about doing it. And we also have a really great feature that, uh, well, a standard one of AMMs is anyone who wants to can come and uh, put down, uh, uh, put deposit uh, funds as a source of liquidity for the AMM to use. Um, so that if the AMM is actually profitable, whoever it is that provided, anyone who provided funds for it to work with gets returns on those. Um, uh, we also have kind of a potential mixed model here. Uh, there is utility um, in having a trusted third party do bookmaking. Uh, particularly on blockchains, you can have quite a bit of uh, what's called minor extracted value. Whoever it is that's making the block can take the transactions, put them in a funny order and actually start participating in the trading themselves and pocket a whole lot of money in the process of doing that. In Shia, the potential for that is a lot less because everything that happens in a block happens simultaneously. Uh, and using any price oracle at all it turns out, even if it has no trust, uh, helps a lot because it can only report uh, one price per block. So uh, th this substantially uh, limits the amount of chicanery that whoever it is that's making the block can, in principle, uh, uh, participate in. But if you want to go even further and actually have a trusted bookmaker who, who you believe is following some algorithm that has restrictions above and beyond simply meeting in the middle, but actually has set formulas like you know real stock exchanges do for how they set the price when there's potential spread and don't take too much uh, spread themselves. Um, you can have something, you can have uh, not automated market maker, but a, I, I'm not sure what to call it, lightly trusted market maker uh, uh, whose job it is to do that kind of bookmaking because you trust them to do a good job of that. But the neat thing is even those can be restricted in a way where they allow third parties to come in and provide the funds uh, for it to have liquidity, which is, uh, and get returns on that and know that whoever it is that's doing the bookmaking isn't pocketing their money. <laughs> so uh, that, that's a pretty cool feature uh, that, that we'll be able to enable in the future as well. Great, thanks. I'm super excited about uh bringing all of this stuff to market. There's uh, so much to build. Uh, uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, talk about one more thing that's coming soon, and then I'm gonna hand it off to Jay to close out some of the coming soon stuff. Uh, so next up, uh, we will be launching uh, with a partner, uh, a web-based tool for helping you build cats and doing list programming. Uh, so this will be like a one-click link from uh, Chia.net to spawn a browser with uh, uh, the ability to start uh, creating uh, cats and Chia Lisp uh, code at the command line. Uh, so we're trying to make this very simple for you to get started, experiment, it's connected to testnet uh, so that you can uh, ideate, develop, uh, test and ship um, all from a web-based instance. So that's coming soon. I uh, will have more about that. Um, Jay, why don't you talk a little bit about verification and then uh, the last thing that's coming. Yeah, so uh, some questions uh, that have already been asked about this subject. So we'll get these out of the way before we go into the Q&A part, which is really great. Nice little transition there. Uh, there's been a lot of questions about verification. Uh, 
on that subject, we're not prepared to talk about what the verification process actually is and entails going through. Uh, there is some work being done there still, and quite frankly, it's also a very long topic. And so we're going to do that later once we finalize some stuff. But just understand that verification uh, is not a system by which Chia is basically approving or denying a cat's existence. Verification is purely a system that allows for the Chia developed wallet that we release to automatically already have baked into it a certain cat or series of cats to to kind of have all the understanding already in place. That's all verification is. It allows you to say, oh, this is the actual cat by this organization for this purpose in my Chia wallet. Other wallet creators, like say the, the guys at Knuckle, for example, could also bake cats into their wallets if they wanted to and create some kind of process to verify or prove them. That's what it's for. The actual process to be verified is something we're gonna talk about down the road. Um, it's, it's a separate conversation, but we did want to test verification with this launch to sort of prove out that what we built and designed is going to work as intended. So to that point, there are two cats that are launching in verification right now as purely sort of a beta test cat. Uh, one of them is available now. So if you start getting the wallet and have been downloading it during this call off our site, you probably have seen it in there. Um, the other one is coming soon-ish within the next like day or two. I think there's some technical stuff they're still working on to get rolled out this week. Uh, the second one coming is, uh, let's go to the first one. The first one already in the wallet is called Space Bucks. Uh, they have a faucet you can go to. Uh, I believe it's uh, spacebuckscoin.com and you can uh, get them from your faucet and collect Space Bucks and do stuff with them. Uh, do note that if you use the new light wallet, you have to use the new light wallet to actually see and interact with these cats. That also means when you use the light wallet in order to get space bucks from the faucet, you have to give it your wallet address. You need to generate a wallet address in the light wallet. Uh, if you use your existing old wallet address from your old wallet, it may not work correctly. You gotta have a new wallet uh, address from the, the new wallet itself. Uh, that doesn't mean it's a different set of keys in a different wallet. Our, our wallets are deterministic and you have a lot of different ones that go to one wallet. So it's all the same. It's just a different, different numbers all. Uh, lastly, the second, uh, cat coming out this week, uh, everyone will be very happy to know that Marmot coin is a thing. Marmot coins will be available later this week. Uh, you will need to provide proof of Marmot as in literally a photo of a live living Marmot that is like physically in your vicinity to the owner to get one. So good luck with that. Uh, but those are the two that are coming out to help test our verification system. And then uh, when we get further down the road in the coming weeks, we'll actually outline to people what the verification system actually entails when we're ready to talk about that a bit more. So with that covered, uh, we have a bunch of questions we want to try to get through here. If you have questions and you're in the Zoom call, again, please put them in the question and answer icon. Click that in that box, put them there. Do not put them in chat. We, we might see them, we might try to get to them, but we cannot guarantee we will, and it's very likely to be missed. If you're in the YouTube stream, uh, if you have access to the Zoom call, we highly encourage you to hop into the Zoom call and put the questions there because they won't get missed in chat that way. That said, if time permits, and we have time before we go into the technical walkthrough, if I can grab questions from that chat, I will try to, but again, I, I can't promise with the way the chat's scrolling that I will necessarily not miss yours. So. Uh, a point on, um... yeah. A, a point on uh, verification uh, of things. Our wallet uh, has a mapping of cat IDs to human readable names. Um, this is a very, very important thing from a security standpoint that you not allow things to self-declare their human readable names and then someone offers you to trade you something for something with a human readable name that you know but then they send you a thing that has that same human readable name but is just some cat that they made themselves uh certain other projects have had giant gaping holes in their security because they haven't even done anything about this issue uh we take security very seriously around here and are dealing with it up front Cool, thanks. Um, so I guess uh, one of the, some of the ones that kind of go together and similar will kind of get out of the way first. Uh, a couple people have asked the question, you know, when do we think we're going to be out of draft for Cat One? Like, how long do you think it's going to be? I know, obviously, like like many things, that's a that's a very open ended answer. But you know, people do are curious. Like, how long do we think we'll be in this draft mode before we finalize it? That's a good question. Uh, will We'll have to uh, we'll have to come back to you on that. Uh, probably going to be a short period of time. I don't think it's weeks, uh, but I don't think it's years. 
This isn't like uh, Google launching Gmail and beta for like four years. Uh, but we do want to, uh, our, our intent in doing this was to give the community an opportunity to give us feedback uh, and to uh, discover things that maybe we should consider adding to the standard before finalizing. Uh, our, our goal, of course, is that any changes, if any, uh, are not breaking changes to cats as they're in the world. There's a pretty high probability that it will be that, that, that it will be unchanged getting out of draft. We, we've been working on it for a while. <laughs> we've had a yeah. lot of iterations on this already. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, in in that same vein related to that is the question of, you know, what is there any possibility and what is the likelihood of the standard changing enough that cats that are minted now will break or not work or have to be replaced uh, before we finalize? Do you want to take that, Brent? No, what was that again? Uh, is, is there a chance that the cats that are minted now could possibly become invalid or broken between now when we finalize things based on changes we might make is that um, possible and if so how likely it's possible I, I would say oh i don't know well, well there's two different failure modes here right either there's something that's so catastrophic that, okay. that we have to give up on them and then there's a chance that uh they just won't be following the final standard, right? And you'll have to, but there will be a reasonable redemption process from them. Uh, so I would say the first one for a catastrophic problem, I'd put that around 1%. For needing redemption, I'd put that around 10%. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's also worth mentioning that, um, and Bram, you can speak to this more. Uh, but with Graftroot, we can enable a cat issuer to migrate uh, coins to uh, a next version of that coin. Um, so that potentially through a, a kind of a redemption process, you can upgrade people's cats. Uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. We have this neat thing where you can make a solution to the cat tail, which can be done by uh, anyone that has uh, that has certain rules in it. So one of the things it can do is you can make a solution to one cat tail, which is, allows you to actually retire some of your funds. And then it will make an announcement that it did the retirement. And then a different cat's tail could allow printing of funds if there's an announcement from something else uh, saying that the retirement happened. So this provides an upgrade path uh, which uh, will allow anyone to do it. So the original issuers can create this uh, upgrade, this redemption process, but then they don't need to, inter to participate in every redemption event. People can just go ahead and redeem themselves. Okay. Um, so moving on to the next questions, there, there's one I want to cover real quick, Galloway. So there was a question someone asked uh, about uh, you know, are we going to use cats ourselves for things like to offer uh, the IPO shares that Gene has talked about in the past? Um, on that particular subject, uh, you could use cats for something like that. Uh, in our case, we, you know, probably not, we won't use cats for that. We have different things in mind if we go with that plan. Uh, we can't really talk about a lot of detail on this kind of stuff because of the sensitive nature around the details. But uh, if, we, if we did something like that, probably not ourselves, but thinking about creative ways you could do solution to problems like that cats are the kind of solution that you know we'd like to see people using for those kinds of things um so uh paul uh you mentioned at one point that the cats cannot be seized by their issuers uh does it also mean that a cat can't be frozen by the issuer or, or in other ways locked out from being used going forward yeah so this is a really good question um uh and uh short answer is uh maybe um, uh, so, uh, on other blockchains, you've got, uh, assets like Tether, for example, uh, in which the issuer of Tether was able to freeze, uh, Tether transactions, uh, and other stable coins have similar types of capabilities as well. Uh, those are not, uh, capabilities that are inherent to the cat one standard. Uh, could you uh, hack in a capability to do stuff like that? Uh, maybe. Um, it would be challenging. Uh, 
Um, and I wouldn't put it outside the realm of possibility that somebody does that in future. Um, Bram, maybe you have some comments on, on some of this as well. Yeah, yeah. The, there's this question about covenants in general <laughs> on, on things um, that, uh, and like Bitcoin core devs have in the past been very anti-covenant. Um, they seem to be warming up a bit for the same reason that uh, I've warmed up to them. But there's a distinction in covenants between things that are opt-in versus opt-out that you don't want, when you get funds, you don't want there to be this rider on them that's sort of attached that you don't see that says that they have these extra rules about them where someone can come and claim them from you in the future, for example, or put limits on what you can do with them um, without you having kind of proactively decided you want to have this. So we've intentionally made it in the CAT standard that the issuer is not capable of seizing funds, that you could have um, a, a cat which was issued in a way where there were covenants that allowed for seizing on all of the cats that were issued, but this would be very visible in their utility. You, have, you would have to have a wallet that was capable of using funds that had this um, restriction put on them. Uh, and specifically be aware of that logic uh, in order to use these things. It's not like someone kind of sneakily put this in and then without you having an awareness that this could happen, uh, your funds get seized. Uh, I, I believe this is coherent on the theory of these are your uh, tokens. Like if you have an ERC-20 token, uh, they're you're not really holding this yourself. There's this thing on chain that's holding it for you and kind of remembering that it's yours. Where it, with the CAT standard, in addition to being an actual code base instead of an API, um, it has this whole approach that the coins are very much yours. And, and we've intentionally made it uh, so that the, uh, it, uh, so that issuance only gets invoked if the coin wants it to get invoked. Um, so there's another question I'm going to get to, but real fast, I want to answer it that just popped up in YouTube that I want to make sure it's clear. Uh, folks who are downloading the beta for the Light Wallet, it is literally a technical beta. It does say on the download page that uh, please do not run this on the same system you're farming because it will disable your farming process. Um, this is not representative of the final wallet. Uh, you will be able to run the final wallet, whatever you want, without having problems. This is purely a factor of the fact that this is a technical beta for the light wallet. And that is why you can't run it on the same system that you're currently farming and, and uh, harvesting on. So that's just a limitation of the beta. That's not a design feature of the wallet long term. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, uh, so I got a question here. Someone asked, uh, Matt briefly mentioned uh, about the ability to design a cat that can be farmed. Uh, this feels like a huge feature. Can you talk about it a bit more? Is the option on cat creation and is it using the same blocks and proofs that we currently use for XCH, if you did that? Yeah, so it's just a fun um, tale that I uh, like played with a little bit. Um, basically, like I said, a tail is an arbitrary chia list program and um, similar to how we do pooling rewards, pooling rewards have to prove that they are block rewards, that they came, that they are, they were brought into existence by being a farming reward. Um, and you can have a tail that specifically, that does that check as well. Um, and if, if, if you do have a parent that is a farming reward, you can, you can turn yourself into a cat. Um, I, there's lots of design that would go into this, but it, it's just one of the possible cats. There's lots of weird things that happen if you do it just like that, where like people with previous block rewards can also turn it into cats and stuff like that. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what the value of that would be, but it's just, I'm just, it was just an example to point to how arbitrary the tail functionality can be. We fully intend to do lots of fun, silly stuff with cats. Uh, so my, my statement about the light wallet triggered a flurry of more questions to go to the same concept. Uh, yes, what, what, what I said was, if you install the light wallet on the same system that you're currently farming, what's basically happening is it's a separate Chia install side by side, and it's going to disable the functions of the other Chia install. That's why if you install it, it will prevent you from farming harvesting. Now, you can install it on the same one if you don't mind the fact your farmer is going to stop. And then you can just switch back to your farmer and rerun its initialization and, and have it take over again. Uh, but you can't do both at the same time. Uh, and and someone asked, uh, is the light is the light wallet running mainnet or testnet because it only synced in four minutes? Uh, it is running mainnet, and yeah, it only synced in four minutes. Uh, my 
my wallet, when I installed it last night, I have a little over 200 transactions going back since the launch of mainnet. Uh, and my light wallet synced and was ready to go in about eight minutes. Uh, it is fast. That's why we call it a light wallet. And if anyone here wants to kind of elaborate on that, feel free. Otherwise, I can move on to the next one. Uh, it's doing a lot less downloading and validation mm -hmm. than the older uh, light client protocol. So that, that's why it's a lot faster. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe can be made much faster than it is right now. It, it should be possible for it to go quicker than that. It's just it's probably not doing the greatest job of pipelining stuff when it's in here. Uh, and then, and, OK. Uh, yeah, you, you said testnet versus mainnet. Technically, it's going to run whatever your Chia instance is currently running. If it's on, you can run testnet or mainnet with the light wallet. Yeah, yeah. I th well, I think they were just yeah. confused because it took four minutes. And they were like, clearly, this isn't mainnet. It must be testnet if it went well, that fast. <laughs> right. um, uh, and, and, and one last, one last light wallet question was, uh, can you farm with the light wallet? Uh, right now, currently, no, because you're literally just installing the light wallet. It's just a wallet. Uh, but but in the future, the light wallet is going to be folded back into the whole package of Chia, and it will be one experience again down the road. Yeah, you're going to have to kind of, it, it's always better to be running a full node yourself. Um, <clears throat> if you do try and farm with a light client, you are de facto going to be picking some random full node out there and asking them to make blocks for you, which might mean that you're kind of trusting them to not pocket a bunch of your fees. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're probably better off running a full node yourself. Um, and and one, one last question we got here for the light wallet. Uh, can, can someone here kind of give a high level comparison of what our light wallet is like compared to say the knuckle IO wallet that's out there? Um, so I, I don't really want to speak too much for the Knuckle people, so this is speculative. I believe Knuckle started working on a light uh, wallet before our protocol was ready. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly where they are right now, but I think slash hope that their uh, medium term plan at least is to use uh, our light client protocol. But I, I don't want to speak too much for them. Okay. Um the uh the, the the common thing people ask is you know what, what's this like compared to erc20 and uh you know before we said publicly that it's it's the an analog to it but our version is is much more flexible we hope and think uh can someone do more of a high level comparison between the cat standard and an erc20 uh yeah um the erc20 Remember is an eight so go ahead. Matt, Matt looked like he was really eager to answer that one. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> well, here, Matt can answer because I've been answering everything. Um, well, a lot of the difference is is because of uh, like coin model. Um, so our tokens are coins. And so we've talked quite a lot about why our smart applications are not smart contracts, they're smart coins. And this applies again here where the ERC20 is a contract that you, it sort of keeps a track of, of who has what and then it's permissioned. You talk to it and then it will move some data around. Uh, but with ours, these are individual coins. And um, as I was saying earlier, that is very good in terms of letting people actually own them. Uh, I was stressing that you can put whatever you like inside of the inner puzzle. You can program cats and that that you own and you can't do that with ERC20. Okay. Anything you want to add for? Um uh yeah, also ERC20 is an API where cat1 is an actual code base. So, uh it, Every single ERC20 token, you're just kind of trusting the implementation of it to behave the way it's supposed to. Where Cat1 is the same code base everywhere, and you know what it's doing uh, in, in all cases. Uh, and that it has these guarantees of not seizing your coins and things like that. OK. Uh, someone asked, uh, 
are we going to leave the API all littered with old references to colored coins? It's kind of confusing it, the way it is in the current branch. Uh, I'll, I'll let someone here if they want to expound on that, but I, I will yeah. start that with just saying, you know, the cat stuff isn't actually in the release branch yet. So it's not been put in. So you, you, none of the changes we've worked on are actually reflected in that, which is why old stuff is still in there, but I'll let someone else speak more to that. If you want to. Yeah. They're not going to, they're not going to be the same. Um, they're, uh, yeah, but by the time we, we get it into the actual release, it will they will have all changed to say cat and stuff like that. So don't rely on the APIs, I guess, is the takeaway there. Or um, be ready for them to change when it goes back into the release. Yeah, the, the term colored coin is a term of art for the general approach to tokens we're using here. So there might be a few references to it still there. Uh, but uh, for the most part, when we mean cats specifically, we'll be talking about cats throughout the documentation. There, there, there is a, a large number of the Chia community who, for a lot of them, this is their first experience in crypto and blockchain. Uh, Bram, can you give like a two minute like thing of like where the term colored coin actually came from and why it's a thing that we used? Oh, oh yeah. It, it's the, the, the idea is that if you have a, um, if you want to have a, a token represent some of something else, you just have some ratio between them. You say, well, th these uh coins are going to represent if you're doing like a stable coin right you say these coins like each mojo of this coin is worth like a dollar or something like that um and this makes it so you can transact on chain and uh um uh, uh and have everyone do their custody and stuff uh, the pro and this is a term that goes back to being used in Bitcoin. We have things like Omni Protocol that talk about colored coins. Uh, the problem with things like Omni Protocol is you need a full node in order to validate what is and is not uh, a counterfeit or real um, one of these coins. Uh, so we have tricks in here where you can actually validate on chain and you don't need to do that stuff. So it gets all the benefits of you custody your own stuff and the, the coins have all the power of general purpose coins, uh, but uh, uh, while still having this uh, uh, mapping uh, thing. Um, but it, yeah, the, the term colored coin just means it's identified. It's labeled as representing this thing. It has that capability. Uh, that's all that the colored uh, means there. Uh, but the, the word colored in other contexts <laughs> can make people a bit edgy. So we want to get away from it. And actually most of the time when we talk about things, we're specifically referring to cats. So most of our documentation is referring to cats everywhere. But yeah, colored coin is a old uh, term of art for these things. Cool. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Um, uh, it, the the cat minting web code. Are we gonna make that open source available? Um, Chris uh, Dupree, our good friend at Chiaplot, asks. Uh, yeah, that's it, it. Is already open sourced. Um, it's uh, the, the little tool that I've written is at uh, cat dash admin dash tool. Um, that's the repository name. So you can go look at it right now if you'd like. Yeah, the, the cat issuance rules and logic are much much simpler or at least the ones we're releasing are much, much simpler than the CAT standard itself. <laughs> cool. Uh, are we going to be offering any guidance uh, for creating custom oracles? Um, I think this stemmed out from the conversation you had much, much, much earlier when kind of dove into AMMs. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I actually wrote a uh, blog post before going into quite a bit of technical detail about approaches to this that I think lost a lot of people on it <laughs> because it goes into so much technical detail. Um, we, uh, we're always hoping that there will be like community development <laughs> of all of these things. Uh, uh, so Long-term, we hope that there will be more uh, chillless programming from the community than from us, uh, partially because we're a little bit shorthanded trying to get through all the things we want to get done around here. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, at some point in the not too distant future, there will be AMM stuff actually built um, possibly by us directly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and I'd, I'd also add that there are some things as we, uh, now that we've released Cat1, uh, that we will also release as like reference examples. And some of these will be um, tails that we'll develop as reference examples, as well as singletons. And this is an example of one of those things that we'll 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 play around with too. 
Yeah, the, the building an AMM involves, um, you need to use singletons and you actually need to use colored singletons, which we haven't, or, you know, catted singletons, which we haven't developed yet. And, uh, and then there's some communication between them and some business logic around it and stuff like that. But um, it's not, it's not super difficult to do, uh, but it's work. All right. Uh, so for those of you with questions, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to knock out two or three more questions that are kind of like grouped together. Uh, then we're going to move into the technical walkthrough that folks will kind of drive you through the whole process of actually creating a cat. Uh, I, I'm sure you'll have questions as we go through all that. So as you guys, you know, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in there. Uh, and uh, I will let the folks who are actually doing the technical walkthrough keep an eye on the questions coming in and let them choose what they want to answer in relation to what they're talking about. Because when we get that technical, I'm assuming the questions, there will be points where they're more relevant than not in what they're discussing, and they know that better than I do. So I'm going to wrap up a few of the non-technical questions and then let you guys filter in questions as we do the tech walkthrough so we can move on to that part. Uh, so uh, one of the questions we have is... Um, do we uh, do we anticipate the light wallet or other future wallets having a direct way to interact with uh, OTC offers in a detailed manner? For example, being able to run queries for various cat offers at various price points and et cetera. Uh, that, I'm, I'm assuming that's an answer that's basically it's down to the development of the wallet, right? Like if someone makes a wallet of their own design, like it's a functionality piece based on what they want to build, correct? Yeah, so I, I think there's a couple of things there. One is, uh, I, I see those kinds of capabilities definitely emerging in wallets, uh, maybe in ours. Uh, but the other thing I would mention is that we are uh, embarking on a new development for wallets, uh, which will support what we're calling a plugin architecture. This will enable a whole bunch of cool things. Uh, first, it'll enable uh, developers to build uh, uh, chainlist contracts that can uh, be added into the wallet. So you can discover and add these things in. Uh, these could include things like rate limited features and time locks and callbacks and all kinds of cool capabilities that you can add to uh, the wallet. Uh, uh, but we'll also, through this architecture, enable people to um, take this code and plug it into their own wallet so that as a developer, you can build once and through the plugin architecture, it should be supported by any wallet out there that also adopts the same architecture. Um, so lots of cool stuff coming there. Um, uh, Bram uh, is leading the charge on our overall R&D for this. Um, uh, Bram, do you want to talk a little bit about that too? About what specifically? The, the plugin architecture and how it will support things like offers and trades and. Oh, um, oh yeah. The, it, it, so there's a certain project that has a lot of DeFi, <laughs> um, but in that one, it generally is the approach that if you want to do any of its DeFi stuff, you just find an address to do your DeFi thing and you send your funds to it and you just trust whatever that is. That is not how we do things around here. Um, we think people should be custodying their own stuff. In fact, a lot of the functionality that we have are specifically control your own custody bits of logic. Uh, so those ones especially, but also pretty much everything else really needs to have local wallet UX around what it's doing because your wallet is doing these things. So the logic to uh, do this has to be local. Um, and we want to make it so that these different bits of functionality are easily portable to like mobile wallets and other people's wallets and things like that. So we're going to be building it up so that every single piece of functionality and logic around this has like a bundle of business logic and UX logic uh, that handle it, that people can import into those things. And you can have an overall wallet that knows about these different things inside of it. And we're planning on dog fooding this for our own wallets to make it so that our own wallet is structured so that uh, there's the like vanilla part of it. And then the rest of it, actually possibly even the, just, even the vanilla part of it as well are all written as plugins where uh, they, they individually control different coins that might be in various different states. 
uh, but it falls under a coherent overall umbrella logic that can handle uh, different bits of business logic handling different things where you can easily add more of these things and they can interact with each other and stuff like that. That's kind of a big project. Uh, it's going to clean up our wallet a lot <laughs> in the process of doing that, uh, but probably also rewrite <laughs> most of our logic to do that. Don't worry. Your existing wallets will get ported, no problem. We'll make sure of that. <laughs> um, but we'll have a much better, more portable, more maintainable code base in the end with uh, easily adding a lot more functionality to it in the future. All right. Uh, in that case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys start with your technical walkthrough. Uh, so I, I don't know the, the flow and plan of who's going to be doing that, but I'll let you guys kind of take that from here. So we're going to have, uh, at this point, Quex and Dan Perry support uh, uh, a screen share walkthrough of um, creating, issuing, and minting cats. Um, and, and as Jay mentioned earlier, this part of the discussion we're happy to take questions and pause and stop. This is like a, a real time thing. Um, but please keep those questions bounded to this process uh, as opposed to general business questions. And and questions you do have outside of the technical stuff they're walking through, we're going to wrap up with a few final questions. If you've asked a question we haven't gotten to yet, chances are it's because I'm intentionally holding it for the end as kind of a, a closing wrap up summary. Uh, if you have questions that are not related to the walkthrough, you can put them in. I cannot guarantee we will get to it at the end because we, we can't just do another like 45 minute Q&A thing. But um, please focus on asking questions right now on this. And then if you have other questions, well, I'll, I'll have an opportunity to go through them at the end. Okay, I, uh, I guess I'll take it from here. Um, so I, I'm, I'm gonna keep this process uh, as simple as possible. I have uh, two new YouTube videos that uh, should just be posted to the glisp.com website. It's also on YouTube. Um, if you want to see like the really extra technical stuff um, with doing multiple issuances and, and a single time issuance, the, the issuance I'm going to do right here is actually just like, not a real, it's, 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 I'm kind of making a point about tails and I'll, I'll show you in a second here. Um, so let me see if I can share my screen. Um, oh yeah, hold on. All right, everyone can see that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we got you. Cool. That's so, um, so this is the the cat utility that I, I threw together last week. Um, it's it's basically just one command right now. Eventually, I want it to support uh, doing things with minting and melting as well. That we um, we don't have we don't have a definite plan for yet. Um, but basically, we've got this this big help message, which is these are all the things you need to mint a cat. Um, and uh, and you can basically kind of go down it like a checklist and figure out all the stuff you need. Um, so what kind of cat am I going to be minting right now? Um, I, I decided for simplicity's sake to choose a tail of nil. Um, this is kind of an interesting point about tails, which is that this is a valid tail. Um, you don't, uh, a tail program, just like a regular Chia list program returns a list of conditions. Um, and that list of conditions can even be empty, which means that anything works. Um, <laughs> so, uh, this, this cat that we're about to issue is going to be pretty much uh, like Chia that's expensive to tra transact um, in terms of who can mint and melt it and whatnot. Um, but I, again, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. If you want to see about doing only one-time issuances or multiple issuances, I have the uh, YouTube videos up. Um, so yeah, we go through our first argument. It's a tail, um, which is nil. Our solution is also going to be nil, um, just to return nothing. Um, it also gives you the option to specify where you want to mint these cats to. So um, this is a wallet address that I have. Let me bring my wallet over here. Uh, it's right here. This is our new uh, standalone wallet if you've not seen it already. Um, and so I just grabbed this wallet address because I'm just going to mint them to myself. Um, the amount that I'm going to mint is 100,000 mojos. Um, we have this default conversion in our GUI where we go um, where we go 1,000 cat mojos is equal to one cat, similar to how a trillion regular mojos is one Chia. Um, so that's, uh, I'm just gonna mint about uh, 100 cats uh, right here. Um, an important part, an important point about fees is that uh, they get paid in regular Chia. Um, a lot of people ask this question when they start diving into cats is like, how do cat fees work? Um, because our farmer's gonna take cats, you know, stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't exactly work that way. Um, what you do is you do your regular cat spend and then you attach another Chia spend alongside of it. 
that pays the fee for the cat spend. So you are still paying the farmer in Chia um, to transact cats. Um, there's a couple other flags in here that I'm not, um, for simplicity's sake, I decided not to include, um, which is just that you can add signatures or additional spends, even if you want to, um, to make really complex tails that require like a singleton announcements and stuff like that. This is all supported in here. Um, and one thing that I forgot to support was specifying the wallet fingerprint that you uh, can use. And I'm going to add that very shortly. Um, <laughs> but right now it just does your first wallet. Um, okay. And then we're, we're outputting the spend bundle as bytes. If we don't, it'll come out as JSON. Nothing too important there. Uh, so I'm just going to run this and we're going to see a massive wall of text come up. Lots of bytes. Um, at the top here, there's the really important thing to take note of, which is your asset ID. Like I said before, this is how people um, identify your cat and add it to their wallet. I'm going to go ahead and copy this into my notepad over here. Um, for right now, uh, so what I'm going to do as the next step here is I'm going to push this spend bundle. For right now, uh, you have to run a full node to issue the cats just because we don't have an endpoint to push transactions directly through the wallet right now. Um, that's just, I think that is probably temporary where we could probably add an endpoint to the wallet to have it push transactions for you. Um, but this whole big wall of byte text is, is a spend bundle. It's been serialized. I'm just going to copy all of it. And as you can see in my window over here, I have a full node running. Let me just make sure it's still running. Yep. Full node synced. So we're good. And I'm going to use the Chia dev tools, uh, utility that I've demoed before paste this big wall of text and push your transaction. And if you, you'll see, you'll get a response. Um, if you've done, done everything correctly, that it went through successfully. And uh, now we're waiting for it to, to get confirmed on the blockchain and actually be minted. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna copy this asset ID and I'm gonna go over to our wallet and we're going to add the token to our wallet. Um, this is an old version. There'll be different verified cats when you look at it. Um, We'll add a custom, we'll just call it QuexCoin. So I did in YouTube videos as well. We paste our asset ID here and we add it. Um, this could take a second because it's got to generate a bunch of uh, puzzle hashes for your wallet. So just give it a, a minute here. I should point out the uh, while we're waiting, the, the videos that Quex did are going to go up on the Chialis website as well. They might already be there right now. And as you can see, it got confirmed on the blockchain. We now have 100 Quex coin to spend. Um, this, again, the tail I used is not secure in any way. It, it only outputs nothing. So <laughs> um, it will restrict you in no way. And you can mint these or melt these um, at will. Um, for more specialized tales, uh, you can go check out those YouTube videos. Um, I should probably maybe do one about just like what a tail is in general. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the process for right now. Uh, does anyone on the panel have any questions before I stop screen sharing or want to point out anything? Okay, I will. I will. I will stop the screen share now and. Uh, we can move on to other questions. Thanks, Quex. That was uh, quick and easy. Uh, looking forward to other people going out and creating uh, their own cats as well. Um, back to you, Jade. Are there questions from the community yeah, uh, so before we close up? I wanted to ask, first of all, were there any questions on any of that tech walkthrough? Uh, none came through, so I just want to give folks a chance to ask. Um, I'll folks figure that out. Uh, so going back to some of the other questions that we had, uh, this is a bit of a longer one, which I held intentionally. Uh, so I'll give folks a chance to ask any technical questions if they have some in the meantime. Uh, Paul, this is kind of a product question for you. Uh, this was asked in both YouTube and Zoom, and that was, you know, can we elaborate a bit more on the new feature overall of creating cats? Uh, what what is it like? Like, how is it going to drive adoption? Like, why is it a priority for us, and why was it something that we focused on? Sure. Uh, uh, so, there's two parts to it. One is uh, to drive adoption of the Chia ecosystem. We need a way to help onboard uh, capital um, into the ecosystem to help it grow. 
And the easiest way to start doing that is to enable people to create their own assets uh, on the blockchain uh, so that uh, a number of different types of assets that have value can start to grow in the ecosystem and capital can start flowing into the chain. Uh, now, if you're going to do that, you need some uh, kind of guardrails for the developer community so that things can be standardized, so that things interoperate, whether that is uh, wallets or block explorers or exchanges, uh, you need some way in which these assets can be interoperable with the community at large. And so that was you know, a major reason to have a cat one standard. And then the additional part of that, which is very cool and unique to Chia is that the assets themselves are also interoperable with each other so that coins can, uh, can communicate and interoperate with each other and do cool things. Um, so those were the, the reasons why we focused on uh, getting the Cat1 standard out and done. Uh, more standards to come for other things, things like NFTs as a standard uh, and additional standards after that. Okay. Um, uh, I didn't get any technical questions. Uh, so this one, we, we kind of touched on this at the beginning. This person may probably miss the beginning intro. Uh, they said, you know, great job on Cats 1. Uh, what will Cats 2 look like? Uh, I know we started off by saying that, you know, Cats 2, you know, Cats 1, Cats 2, it's more of a case of the, if we make massive revisions that are more than just incremental improvements, we may do new standard numbers. But um, I don't think we've put a lot of thought already into what an entirely new standard would look like. But Bram, do you want to say anything on that? Yeah, we have, uh, I, I seriously doubt there will ever be a CATS 1.1 <laughs> um, that uh, if there is a new standard, it will be a CAT 2. If and when that happens, it will be based off of experiences from having had CAT 1 be out for a while and clearly warranted improvements to it. Uh, improvements and expansions on it. Uh, we do not know what those might be yet. We will have to have experience. But in the interest of standards actually being useful, we intend to have one standard and stick with it as much as possible. Okay. Uh, anyone else here have any kind of closing stuff they want to go over? Or? Someone asked if uh, cats will have atomic swaps and if that will be easy or difficult. That will be pretty, pretty very easy with the inner puzzles. Uh, yeah, um, the uh, offers are a kind of atomic swap. Uh, they do not work cross chain. So often when people say atomic swaps, they mean very specifically secure hash pre-image based atomic swaps, which have the cool feature that they work cross chain. Although the downside of that is they're a little complicated and require some coordination off chain in order to do that, where uh, offers require no interactivity whatsoever. Someone makes an offer, sends it to the world, someone else takes it and does it, and it just goes through. Uh, so much, much simpler uh, to handle. Okay. Um, well, uh, that pretty much wraps up, I guess, what we have to go over then. Um, if you guys don't have anything else to cover. Um, so... I guess we'll call it here. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, like we said, uh, videos of how to do all the things that we walk through are up on chialisp.com now. Uh, documentation is up there as well. We also have a blog post on chia.net that covers some of the things we've talked about. Uh, and then of course, this video will stay archived on our uh, Q&A section of YouTube as well for referencing. Um, I think that covers all the stuff we're releasing. Uh, also, downloads are on the site's downloads page now. Uh, if you just go to chia.net and click on Farm Chia, that takes you to the downloads page. If you scroll down below all the main releases, we have a section for betas and those kinds of things. And there's a new block now for this specifically as well. Uh, so that's where all the resources can be found. And you can go to the Chia Lisp channel since Technically, cats are a subset of the Chia Lisp technology. They're built on that technology. Uh, all that discussion, we've kind of focused on the Chia Lisp channel in the uh, key base. So feel free to come through there with other questions and comments and help you might need doing this. And one more thing with the uh, where to get started with reading up on cats, just in case that wasn't clear. I think the best spot to go is just to our blog. And there's going to be links to all of the other documents that are out there based on the blog entry. So start there. Cool. Thanks, Dan.
All right, folks. Uh, thanks for coming. And uh, for those of you who are attending to watch the next one, we will see you tomorrow <laughs> with our uh, postmortem on the dust storm from a few weeks ago. Uh, thanks all, and see you then. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Everybody.